ask you, Randy, around very, very well. Third heat is underway. The time to beat still belongs to Brandon Luckett, who put up the mark of 9 minutes, 27.47 seconds in heat number one. 132 feet down the field with Rescue Randy, and still everybody choosing to drag that thing, as is Roy Gamboa on the left of your screen. So what you have to remember when you're doing the drag, one, we just did a whole bunch of rowing, so that's your entire posterior chain, your hamstrings, your low back, your butt. If you have the chance, like Noah here, you want to get that Rescue Randy up onto your hips as high as possible, one, so you have less friction, and two, to make it a lot easier on your back. Noah Olsen will be the first to the rope. In lane nine, that's Zeke Grove. Next to him in lane 10, on the right of your screen is Craig Kenny. Two rope climbs, and then they will make the run to the obstacle course where they will face eight different obstacles, and it's about a 650 meter run out to that section of this event. You may not be able to tell, but that second rope is a thicker rope. It's just over two inches. So we've blown out your forearms and your grip the day before uh, on that row. Now you're having to carry Rescue Randy. Now, again, it's a lot more of that forearm work and just a little added kick in the gut with that weight vest and that thicker rope. Noah Olson in the lead. James Newbury is behind him, followed by Roy Gamboa. And now 650 meters to the obstacle course. A number of these athletes faced the obstacle course last year, but it was a much different setting and a much different event. Well, it was much quicker, for sure. I mean, it was an all-out sprint. You know, you're, you're trying to get the fastest one in advance forward uh, in that particular way that they had it set up. But this year, it's a lot slower, meaning there's a lot. it's a lot more spread out. So, yes, it's an obstacle course, but a totally different version of that test. We're going to uh, put a, a weight vest on you and just switch it up so it's not the same thing. What are the keys to success here for these athletes as they move through the battleground presented by the United States Marine Corps? I think the first thing is quick but smart on the run. Yes, you are on the run for a good amount of time of the total amount of time here, but you aren't going to win and lose this particular event on the run. So all you need to do is be smart. Keep yourself moving, keep yourself in the pack, but be ready for those obstacle courses. And when you get to that O course, you have to limit the mistakes. We've seen time and time again that leaders come out, they get to that first, uh, first couple obstacles, they lose it, they mess up, and then all of a sudden they go right back to the back of the pack. Uh, so limit those mistakes and then just keep moving. James Newbury is on the left of your screen. Noah Olson is following him. These are all athletes who are trying to work their way into the top 10. Noah Olson right now sits in 19th place. James Newbury is in 14th. I think James is really trying to make up for what happened in that first that first day. He had kind of a rough first start. This seems to be his his thing does really really well in the regionals come to the games and then just starts struggling so i really think he is trying to push the pedal push the uh the limit a little bit to get some more of those points and look at he's really pushing the tempo on that run as compared to the other guys newbury's on to the first obstacle that is the hurdles and you mentioned his start he was really good on the criterion finished second there but then a 30th in the 30 muscle ups for time and then a 38th in the crossfit total but he came back and ended up day one with a solid result, eighth in the marathon, marathon row. And he is up and over the second obstacle, and that is the rope wall, and Noah Olson is right behind him. And now Newberry approaches the low net. Olson on the right of your screen just getting over the rope wall. Time to beat again is 9 minutes, 27.47 seconds. Brandon Luckett put up that mark in the first heat. No problem getting under that rope net. One of the things you have to be concerned with is not letting the back of your vest get caught on it. Let's send it down to Mike Arsenault with more on the obstacle course. Thank you, Sean. Here's an added wrinkle to the O course from this year compared to last year. Last year, there were finite lanes, lane one to five. This time it is first come, first serve. So for some of the obstacles, there's only five spots. Unlikely there will be an issue, but for example, if you fail one, you go back to the beginning, summons in that lane, you either have to wait or pick another lane to then try to complete the obstacle once again. James Uber is onto the hop logs, and Noah Olson is starting to gain some ground on him, so no problem for either one of those gentlemen through that. And this is important for Noah. Noah did very well in the O course last year. I was a little concerned with how the rope climb was going to be because that's where he failed out in last year's games. 
but he looks very strong and he's made up a lot of distance on James Newberry. And what the one thing that I'm really excited about Noah is he seems to have a new game plan. He's not going all crazy on the beginning. Looks like he's pacing himself for that second part of the run. And Noah Olsen finished 30th in the opening event, mostly because of the mechanical of his bike. And now Newberry on the rope swing, and he will have to go back. Noah Olsen gaining some ground. So Newberry with another try. You have to clear the obstacle before he can move on. Newberry does just that. Now here comes Noah Olsen. So James Newberry maintains his lead here in the third of four heats. And now on to the final obstacle, the monkey bars. We saw how fast James went on the run. We know Noah can move, and Noah looks very composed. Seeing if he paces correctly, because he looks he looks amazing. Keep this in mind on this run back to the North Park. Noah Olson is working out of lane number one. That is at the far end of the field, so he will have farther to go when he gets back into the North Park. James Newbury is in lane seven, so the distance he needs to complete before he can get to his road climbs is shorter. Newbury is out front, and he is in the lead. Again, a shorter distance for him to run when he enters the North Park to get back to his rope climbs. Look at the distance that they've put between them and the rest of the pack. I don't even see anybody else behind them. James Newbury is a guy, and you mentioned this earlier, he had a great Pacific Regional. Won the Regional for the second straight year, won three of the six events in the process. Well, I'm really hoping that, that the, the things that went down in the first day for him, those two bad finishes, aren't affecting his confidence. Wow, look at that spread. They've really pushed it against the rest of the field. James just needs to hold it together. We have a lot more events. He's doing well here. We saw how well he could push in that criterion. So we know, we know that he has the gas and the leg power to really test the rest of the field. I know he just has to kind of hang. He's got to stay tight with them. James Newbury's best finish at the CrossFit Games overall was in 2016, his rookie year, when he took 24th. Newbury and Olsen looking to chase down Brandon Luckett's top time. That's in the upper left-hand part of your screen. And that has stood since the first of four heats. Wow, he's actually picking up the tempo. You can see James, look at the cameraman. The cameraman's having to sprint alongside. That's how fast James is going. Luckily, we have some fit camera people out there. <laughs> One of the great things with James is he, the way he is racing, the way he's pushing, he knows that he's not pushing against this heat. He is pushing against the entire field. That's what the, all these athletes need to remember. It's not just in your heat. You can't let them set your pace. You have to set your pace against the best times. Beautiful way. Now you can tell that thicker rope, it's a little bit more difficult to lock your feet. So it's not impossible. It's just something you have to contend with. And now you can see how heavy he's breathing. That's the issue here. What What's your heart rate doing? How do your arms feel as you're having to go through each one of those pulls? Newberry putting the finishing touches on his second and final rope climb as Noah Olsen is working his way back to the rig to begin his final two rope climbs and now 132 feet with rescue Randy remember it's 185 pounds that James Newbury will be dragging down that field Newbury has a shot here at setting the time to beat 927.47 seconds Brandon Luckett's time since the first heat has stood and now the sun's starting to peek through here on the North Park if you watch what James is doing, he's moving quickly, but the, he's grabbing the top part of that, that uh, vest. He should be grabbing underneath. It would be a lot easier on his back. He could take bigger steps, and it wouldn't be such a strain. There also wouldn't be so much friction on him. James Newberry is going to set the new time to beat as he wins heat three of event number five. And now Noah Olson. If he can get in in five seconds, he'll be in second place. That's where Brandon Luckett's prior top time is now slotting, so that won't happen for Olsen. He does have a shot at third. That has now passed, so Olsen will be fourth in the event as he dives across the finish line. Second in the heat for Noah Olsen, 935.18 seconds, and now Logan Collins.
So even with Logan, you can see he's standing Rescue Randy up. That's great. He's got him up nice and high. But that's a lot of weight, not a lot of friction, but a lot of weight, and it's only on his arms. Logan Collins had a great year last year at the CrossFit Games. It was the second time here. He finished 11th overall and won the final event, the Fibonacci final. And he'll get to take another crack at that event later on this evening inside the Coliseum. So Logan Collins looking to move his way into the top 10. He's 17th overall coming into this event. That's Dean Linder Layton, another Australian. Roy Gamboa is coming across the finish line. So Gamboa is in, and now 20 seconds to go before we hit the 11 minute time cap. Dean Linder Layton is in. Craig Kenny's closest to the camera. He's trying to get in. He's got 10 seconds to do it. And Ben Smith is on the upper part of your screen. It looks like the two of them will get in with just a few seconds to spare. Ooh. Rasmus Anderson still on the field. Zeke Grove was still out there. But the majority of the field finishing the battleground presented by the United States Marine Corps, but Noah also got off to a good start, but just couldn't maintain it once he got done with the first part of the event. Beautiful movement of Randy, and he, he started off on that run. I think he was really conserving himself, whereas James Newberry did not sit with that conservative pace.